All right, so uh, my name is Milan Kaur, but my I've joined from another test account. So you'll see JJ Sanchez as my name, but my name is Milan. I've done that because I need to use my MSFT account to show you a specific demo using Microsoft Teams. So uh, before we go to the live demo, let me set some context and talk a little bit about Azure Communication Services. So Azure Communication Services is Microsoft's intelligent CPaaS, which is communication platform as a service. It enables developers to add APIs uh, into their solution for adding these communication capabilities, uh, such as voice and video calling, chat, telephony, SMS, email, and now we're in WhatsApp without, um, you know, without thinking about the underlying infrastructure. One thing to call out here is that Azure Communication Services is built on the same infrastructure that powers Microsoft Teams, and that's why Communication Services is the only CPaaS that can interoperate with Microsoft Teams. Now, what that means is that using Azure Communication Services, developers can build solutions where they can connect non-Teams identity with Teams identity, um, meaning they can add programmatically customers or users who are not on Microsoft Teams, but actually are using third party, you know, website or app and make them join Microsoft Teams meeting. And I think Dan Wallen has showed a couple of demos on how to do that in, in this uh, weekly community call. But today we are going to talk about a new feature in the Teams interoperability space. So, um, I just mentioned that with Azure Communication Services, you could have a customer or a user join a Microsoft Teams meeting. Uh, but in addition to that, now we have Teams click to call as a new feature. Now, with Teams click to call, developers can add users programmatically, uh, actually not users, the users call programmatically to Teams call queues or call attendance. Now, what that means is that for businesses who have, you know, third-party websites or, um, you know, mobile application, they can have their customers connect with the business employees who are using Microsoft Teams with just one click. And I will show you um, show you that in action in a demo just in a few seconds. But before that, let's talk about some use cases. So where is this useful? This is very much useful in the customer service space. Now imagine there's a bank and they have their own website and I as a customer, I'm browsing that website. Um, and I want to talk to a wealth advisor. On the website, there's a button which says contact wealth advisor. And from there, with one click, I can connect to the wealth advisor of the bank who is using Microsoft Teams. So the value here is that when businesses have invested in Microsoft Teams and their employees are, you know, very used to using the native Microsoft Teams experience, they can actually connect their employees with customers without having their employees leave their Microsoft Teams app or experience. Okay, so we are now going to the live demo and this demo will use three main components from technology perspective. Is there a question or a comment or just a mute, um, mute, unmute issue? I think it's mute, unmute issue. Please continue. So. <laughs> okay. So from te technical stack perspective, this demo is going to use Azure Communication Services UI library and Azure Communication Services resource in Microsoft Teams call queue. The UI library will be used for the UI component that we'll use on a third party website. And the resource is basically a prerequisite because the audio video calling experience is being powered by communication services. So you definitely need a resource created on the Azure portal. And then Microsoft Teams call queue because click to call connects the customers with call queues or auto attendance. And we will be using Microsoft Teams call queue for the demo. So let me come out from the PowerPoint and open the demo website.
Okay. So um, this is a Contoso Energy Solar website, and I am uh, I want to save the environment. So I'm here. I want to buy some solar panels, but you know, buying solar panels is not as easy as buying maybe a dress or a pair of shoes. So uh, let's imagine there's the catalog here and I'm browsing the catalog, but I'm very confused as to which one to buy. So I feel like I need to talk to uh, a sales rep. So I click on this button and here I enter my name and then I do want to do a video call. So select all of this. And then I'll click on start call here. But before I do that, let me also bring up my teams because the call will come on my team's call queue. And I've also set that to do not disturb. So let me change that so that the call can come in. OK, so now this is done and also heads up. When I start the call and you see the team's call come in on the agent side, I will mute myself for a few seconds to avoid the feedback frenzy, but then I'll come off mute. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to do the role play of the customer as well as the agent. So you're going to see multiple uh, faces of me <laughs> popping up on the screen. So let's click on start call. Sorry, it took me some time and my screen froze for a bit with all these calls coming in, but you can hear me now, right? Yep, yes, okay. yes, we can. Okay, just to recap of what happened. So now I have two screens in parallel and let me minimize this team's call. So on the left is my agent view and this is my team's call where I got the customer call in my team's uh, environment. So I picked up the call just like I would pick up any of other you know, team's call that I will get. I'm not able to turn on the camera on the agent side because my camera is being used um, here. So let me see if I could turn on camera on this side. I cannot, so maybe I need to turn off the camera here and it will start working. OK, it did. Um, all right, so let me also turn on live captions on the customer side so that you can see the captions coming in. OK, so the demo here is that the agent, which is on the left screen, is joined with the customer through an audio video experience. The agent should be able to share the camera or video stream as well, but right now I have one camera, so I can just share it on, share my video on the customer side. The customer can turn on the live captions as well. That's a new feature. We all know that that's available on the team side, but now on the non-teams identity, live captions can be enabled as well. And someone could select the language that they prefer, like the conversation can happen in a particular language, but the live captions can happen in another language itself. Now, uh, another feature that we have added is that the agent or the Teams user can do screen sharing and the customer can view that document or that screen. So usually when we are taking agent uh, you know, calls, the agents usually needs to share you know, a product page or a documentation. And now that team's experience of sharing a screen can, um, can uh, also show up on the non-Teams user side. So. Let me stop sharing this because it messed up my setup. Well, I think I should have chosen a <laughs> recorded demo and that would have been uh, neat, but I think I wanted to do a live demo uh, for the community call. But yeah, the point being that now you can share documents and do screen sharing from the team side and the customer who is the non-teams entity can see that. You could also do PowerPoint Live and that will work between um, the customer and the team's experience as well. So let me stop this and stop these calls and go to the code behind for this.
OK, so I want you to look, take a look at this widget again, because this is the main part that I will show you in the code, how you can set this up very easily using Azure Communication Services UI library. So if you've not heard about UI library before, uh, UI library provides prepackaged components that can be added to third party applications. Um, and it abstracts the underlying communication code and gives that capability out of the box through React elements and adapters. So if you search for Azure Communication Services UI library online, this is the page that will show up. And uh, for this example, we've used Call Composite. Now, Call Composite is a React element that lets you add um, audio video experience into your application. So it's built on React. And then there's another thing called call adapter that connects the front end elements with backend APIs. But as a developer, you don't have to worry about the backend code. The call adapter itself will do that magic. You just have to use that in your application. Vesa, just a quick time check. Do you have do I have five more minutes? Yes, you can do five more and then we'll transition only to demos today. All right, OK, so uh, now coming to the code. This is a GitHub repo which is publicly available and uh, I will share the link at the end. So we used Teams call queues. Now call queues has been there for a while, so there are documentations available on how to set that up. It is mentioned in the read me document as well, like how you can do that. And then um, Teams call queue is something that can be set only by your admin. So you'll have to reach out to your Teams admin to set that up if you want to try this feature. Now this particular code has two main components, which is the front end and the back end. Back end meaning the server code. So the front end has a component called calling widget component, and that was the main thing that we saw on the website. Um, in here, we use the call composite and call adapter, like I said, and you were importing that from the communication services React library. And then it's basically very simple code where you will actually write some sort of styling for your component because you want your own custom branding. So in this repo as well, I've defined some calling widget component styles. Um, other than that, the main part here or the interesting part here is setting up of the variables that are required to do the audio video call. So one is again, the user that is the customer, a token for that user. And then the other thing that this app will need is where to call, meaning the, the call queue ID. Uh, so yeah, these are the three things that will be needed. One is the user ID, which is the customer ID, and then the, uh, the token to use Azure Communication Services, and then um, the call queue ID. So these three things are being uh, retrieved from the server component. So on the front end, calling widget component is the key class which defines the behavior of the UI React component, and we use call adapter and call composite from the UI library to make things easier here. And then on the server side, we get uh, we get the call queue ID, we get an identity token for the user and pass it back to the front end to make that call happen. The only thing uh, that I want to call out on the server side is that when you are using this code, you will have to go to appsettings.json to update the connection strings and the call queue ID. So you will create an Azure communication resource, update that here, and then uh, when you'll have the call queue ID from your team's admin, you replace that here. And then uh, this repo is ready to be deployed, so you can try this out immediately. So that was the code and the demo. I do want to call out, and I'm not going to the slideshow mode, I'll just zoom this in. So I do want to call out that 
click to call functionality does work with auto attendance and call queues on the team side, but it also will integrate with Microsoft Queues app. Microsoft Queues app is a newer app, which basically enables uh, Teams users to see the incoming calls to attendance and call queues in one pane and it adds certain analytics on it, like how many calls are waiting and what is the average wait time. Uh, but if you have the call queues app, the incoming call that we saw in the demo would also show up here. The advantage of using Microsoft Teams queues app is that not only does it give the analytics, but it also um, gives you an opportunity to connect your organization's CRM. Uh, so what that means is that when an incoming call of the customer comes in, in this case, like Milan was calling from the Solar website, immediately when the Teams user picks up the call, the CRM data can pop up for that customer. So the agent can see the CRM data for Milan and in parallel can attend the call from Teams native experience. Uh, with that, I am through, and these are the important links that you may be interested in. The first one is the demo code that we just saw, and the second link is a tutorial which tells you how to take the out-of-the-box call composite and call adapter that are available in UI library and convert then that to a click-to-call audio video calling widget. So with that, I am through, Vesa. Thank you.